I'd like to move on and talk about the intermediate value theorem as the next thing, because this is the other major topic I haven't talked about this week. And I want to like really give you some like nice tips for solving um, some of the problems that are related to um, the intermediate value theorem. Um, so the intermediate value theorem says that a continuous function can't skip values. Kind of feels like to me like an obvious theorem in a way, because like, yeah, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I have to connect dots and I can't skip, then I can't skip. So what I want to do as far as getting you into this is I want to do this activity together here. So I hope that you're really paying attention with me because let's engage. Let's put down some axes, okay? So draw some axes on your paper. And I'm going to label one, two, three. So I want you to put two points. I'm going to put them in red on mine. I'm going to put down two points at zero comma minus five and 3 comma 12. So here's the first one, 0 minus 5, and then 3 comma 12. And now I want you to draw a continuous function on 0 comma 3. So I want you to do that. I want you to draw a continuous function passing through these two points. As your drawn function, have a root in 0, 3. I'll remind you what I mean by root. What I mean by a root, that's a 0. Or um, a place where the function crosses the x-axis, or a place where f of x equals 0. So it has to be a continuous function, a continuous function. So if I've got three people in the no category right now, and I want you to evaluate whether your function is actually continuous. So as I'm drawing, you can't skip like that. That doesn't count because that's not continuous. So you have to draw a line. You're not allowed to pick up your pencil as you connect these two dots right here. Okay, so if I draw a continuous function, I'm guessing some of you drew like that. Maybe you drew it like that. I hope some of you drew something that like went wildly out above or below. But what you drew, I guarantee you that your function took on all of these values. And look, zero is one of them. Zero is, zero is one of them. Look, this interval of output values that my function is guaranteed to take on includes zero. So must there be a root? The answer is yes, all values in the interval from minus 5 to 12 are guaranteed to occur. So in this case, the thing that I want you to notice is that these two numbers here have opposite sign, that there's a sign change. The interval of output values contains zero because there's a sign change. And that's the fundamental thing that's going on here. I would refer you to um, two places I have one video on the intermediate value theorem in the video resources page, and then corollary two on page 108 of your textbook describes this as well. Very nice statement of this theorem. Um, um, let's try this again in a slightly different sense. So I want to put down some values in a table. I'm going to go x and f of x. I'm going to say that at x equals minus 5, f of x equals 12. Okay, I'm going to go f of x, or x equals minus 4, f is equal to 3, and then at minus 3, the function is equal to negative 2. Negative 2, that continues on to like minus 4. Skip a value, comes back up and it's taking on the value 1.5. At value pi, and we want to answer the question, how many roots are guaranteed to exist? So look at these function values here. The intermediate value theorem says, if f changes sign, there must be a root. I'm going to look, I'm going to start looking at f. I'm looking for sign changes. So do I see a sign change inside here? No. No sign change, which means we're not guaranteed a root here. Do I see a sign change here? Ooh, 
I do, yes, sign change, which means I have a root in minus 4, comma, minus 3, guaranteed to exist. So we have at least one. We have at least one. Sign change? No. Sign change? Ooh, yeah, and it doesn't matter which direction it goes in. The answer is yes. I'm looking at, at the SIGN signs of it. I see a sign change is going from negative to positive. That's going to give me a root guaranteed to exist, negative 2, 0. I don't know where it is, but I know it exists. Sign change? No. Sign change? Yes. Yes. Pi 2 pi. Uh-huh. Good. Yeah, so... um. Oh, I should annotate that right here. So anyone in which there is a sign change in the F values, in the F values, I get a root. The fact that there is a sign change here is irrelevant. This sign change is irrelevant. And there, um, it's common to make mistakes on that one. You'll encounter some problems in Newton if you haven't already to ask you to do things like this. I think they're relatively simple, um, and it's backed up by the intermediate value theorem, which says that a function can't skip values. So if it goes from negative positive to positive, how could it possibly skip zero because the dividing line between negative and positive is zero? The function has to take it on. Mm -hmm. If it's below zero in the morning and it's above zero in the afternoon, at some point the temperature was zero. It's guaranteed. I might have crossed that more than once. Like, it's possible that this has like a thousand roots, but we're guaranteed it's at least three.